Hello, my name is Lisa Pomeroy, and I am in Group 4, Chapter 7 and 8 for Phantoms in the Brain by Dr. Rama Chandran. My presentation is going to be on Cotard Syndrome. Cotard Syndrome is also known as the Walking Dead Syndrome. This is because patients who suffer from it have the delusion that they are dead or a part of them is dead. It is very rare and there is no good estimate on the number of patients. It is more common in women, which makes sense because it is linked to depression, which is also more common in women. It affects mostly elderly or older people, but can affect young people as well. In young people, it is associated with bipolar disorder. It does not have its own disorder listing in the DSM-5. It is still debated on whether Cotard's is its own disorder or a symptom of an underlying disorder such as depression, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. Cotard's is named for Jules Cotard, who first described the syndrome in 1880. The name was first used in 1887. However, the first evidence-based classification was in 1995. Cotard syndrome has a variety of symptoms which include depression, delusion of death, anxiety, guilt, delusion of immortality, self-mutilation, suicidal tendencies, lack of pain, and mutism. These symptoms make sense when you point to the fact that they believe that they are dead. Because when you're dead, you're technically immortal, and if they believe that they are dead, they would also want to kill themselves to go along with the fact that they are dead. There have also been some cases where the patients don't want to eat or drink anything because you don't need calories or nourishment when you are dead and they believe that they are. There have been three stages described for Cotard's syndrome. The first stage is germination. Cotard's cannot be diagnosed at this stage. Symptoms include hypochondria and depression. The second stage is the blooming stage. This is where the nihilistic delusions start. The last stage is chronic Cotard's, which is split into two types, depressive and paranoid. Here are some quotes from a Cotard Syndrome review stating the delusions and how the patients felt. From an 88-year-old man, he was convinced that he was dead and felt very anxious because he was not yet buried. And from a 46-year-old woman, she had the constant experience of having no identity or self and being only a body without content. In addition, she was convinced that her brain had vanished, her intestines had disappeared, and her whole body was translucent. She refused to take a bath or shower because she was afraid of being soluble and disappearing through the water drain. Here are two very different experiences for the same syndrome. There is no known cause for cotards. This is because it is a very rare disorder and there is a lack of data. However, there are many hypotheses. A possible precursor to cotards is personality characteristics. A person with an internal attribution style is more likely to develop cotards. This is associated with depression. An external attribution style is linked to Kopgras syndrome and associated with paranoia. One hypothesis of a cause is a problem with information processing. There is somehow a change in emotional response to faces and bodies and a lack of autonomic response to the self. This would mean that there would be no emotion in regard to the self, leading the brain to believe that the self doesn't exist and is therefore dead. In most cases, there is no gross structural changes seen in under neuroimaging. However, in some, right frontal damage is seen. It is also associated with affected frontotemporal parietal circuitry, as well as prefrontal dysfunction. These have all been seen in different cases, and there is no consensus on structural changes related to Cotard syndrome. There are multiple treatment pathways a Cotard's patient can take. One is that the syndrome can spontaneously disappear. Another is drug treatment, both mono and combination, and it has been seen to be successful in some cases. Finally, ECT has also been seen to be successful in some cases. However, the most typical treatment is to treat the underlying disorder that Cotard's is associated with, for example, depression or bipolar disorder. Cotard's is very rare, but very interesting, and still needs to be studied extensively for us to understand it completely. Thank you for watching.